Hi, I'm Scott Wolf, and I want to introduce you to the announcer of Wheel of Fortune and tell you about his unique Disney connection. He's standing by on a video call right now. If you've seen my previous videos, you may know that I have a pretty extensive collection of Disney props and artifacts, but this is my prized Wheel of Fortune artifact. I don't know what you would call this, but it was used on the show when the wheel spins and it points to a dollar amount or bankrupt or whatever. And it's signed by Pat Sajak and Vanna White. And many years ago, I worked on the TV show Wheel of Fortune. This was before I ever worked for Disney. It was on NBC at that time. But so many things in my life end up having a Disney connection. Now, Wheel of Fortune is on ABC, which is owned by Disney, and it's not uncommon for them to have some Disney-themed weeks. Another interesting connection is that starting in 1989, when the Disney MGM Studios Park opened, the park is now called Disney's Hollywood Studios, park guests were allowed to attend real tapings of Wheel of Fortune, as you can see in this picture that I took in 1993. Today, the show's announcer is Jim Thornton, who's been doing it since 2011, and he has an interesting Disney connection himself. I want you to meet Jim Thornton. Jim, how did you get started on Wheel of Fortune? Charlie O'Donnell, who's the man that we remember uh, when we were kids, right? Uh, growing up, and, and he was the announcer on Wheel of Fortune. Look at this studio filled with fabulous prizes. Well, he passed away in 2010, and my name came up with the producers and uh, because they knew me from KNX 1070, the radio station I worked at in LA and uh, which I was so excited about. My agent called me and said, I think they're kind of jazzed on you, you know? And I said, it's Wheel of Fortune, are you kidding me? No, they don't know who I am. And uh, I was kind of overwhelmed, but it was exciting. I met everybody and I told Harry Friedman, the executive producer there and the other people who came in to meet me, they were so nice. I said, if this lasts one day, it has fulfilled a childhood dream of mine. And so that's kind of it in a nutshell. It, uh, it was something that I always wanted to do though. It wasn't like it was just, hey, maybe I'll try that thing. It was something I always wanted to do ever since I was like seven or eight years old. That's great. So what are some of the typical announcements that you do on the show? Let's see, let me think of one. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, here are the stars of our show, Pat Sajak and Vanna White. Or I might say, um, Tonight's mystery round is brought to you by, I don't know, um, Golden Glow Doggy Treats, whatever it is. And then I say, $10,000. Uh, and I say other little things. I do the prize puzzles. I send people to fabulous faraway places with hard to pronounce names. Uh, but those are all kind of scripted and they're all a little bit different. But uh, yeah, I, I talk a lot, actually. I know Wheel of Fortune was shot in Disney World before you were there, but did you ever get to do any shows there? We have. We did, uh, in 2017, we were at Disney World. It was so much fun, but so hot. Uh, we were close to Epcot Center uh, and uh, the lake was looking better and better. I wanted to jump in the lake. It was right behind our, uh, our stage. Uh, it was a lot of fun. We, um, we did uh, a couple of weeks worth of shows there at Disney World. And that was the last time we've had a remote, so. It was shot outdoors? It was, yeah, it was covered. We just, cause you never know, it might actually rain in Florida, uh, the, the Sunshine State. But it was um, it was a lot of fun. We had the thing about Disney World, you can't use little uh, golf carts. They they don't allow them. You know their insurance doesn't allow it or whatever. So we had to walk about a quarter mile. Vanna and wow. Pat and I between shows. I have to go and uh, do my stuff there. Uh, I announced from my uh, little trailer, and they have to get changed for the next day. So it was a lot of walking for all of us. <laughs> Keeps us in shape. Yeah. You know, I was surprised to find out that you did a voice in a Disney Pixar movie. So which movie was that? I was the guy who comes on the TV set and says, the future is bright at Monsters Incorporated. So that was the movie. So how did that come about? And when did you do that? That was before Wheel of Fortune. That was 2001 when the movie was done and when it came out. Uh, I had met somebody uh, at a party where my son was, uh, he was like, like, if he was four years old, three years old, whatever. And, um, and I met this guy named Howard, really good guy. And uh, he had introduced me somebody to somebody at the party. And I did one of those things where he said, yeah, give, give me your tape. And I said, oh, that's really nice. You know, I'm not used to like handing out a, a tape or a CD, whatever it was. And, uh, but I sent it to him. And, uh, and so he, he did trailers for various movies and Disney movies and so forth. And, uh, and sort of promos and that kind of thing. And so uh, somehow he brought me in and, and my voice was heard by some of the people at Pixar. They used me for a few different things that they were, they were sort of working on. And uh, 
this one actually stuck. So they <laughs> they they made that part. They did that part, and they had me audition for it or whatever. And because they, they were thinking of me, I think of the voice that I did, and it kind of it was one of those funny little things how that worked out. Um, I had an agent, but I, it wasn't something that I externally auditioned for. I sort of got an inside track to that movie. It was so neat. And you know, when a movie comes out, Monsters Incorporated, what's this? You know, you, you don't know. And it turned out to be a huge hit. That was pretty cool. And you're also heard in the attraction at Disney California Adventure, right? Yeah, it's uh, well, the ride is on is a California Adventure, and so you hear my voice when you're standing there in line. It's like a you're forced to listen to me. So you hear these commercials that come on, these sort of gag commercials like, have a bugabrew, it's good to the last glop. When you want something hot to chew, reach for a bugabrew, it's good to the last glop. And, uh, and I don't know if kids will get the reference, they probably wouldn't these days, the, the old uh, good to the last drop, remember? Oh, sure. Good to the last glop. Um, there was uh, another one, Dr. Stink Bombs, spelled B-A-U-M, Stink Bombs Shoe Powder. <laughs> Uh, I, there were some other, like maybe 10 of these commercials that were very well written, but they were spoof commercials that you sort of hear so you don't get bored while you're standing there in line before you get in the, into the ride. And my voice is the last thing you hear, I think, just before you get uh, actual announcements and things uh, on the ride. Something like, keep your arms, tentacles, and legs inside the ride at all times. And I did this same voice, you know, that same kind of uh, Gary owens -y sort of voice that I did for the movie. Attention visitors, for your safety while motoring through Monstropolis, please keep your hands, arms, feet, legs, tentacles, and tails inside the taxi. And be sure to supervise your little monsters. Thank you. I know you're also heard at the start of the ride itself. Yeah, then my voice is cut off and then you're on the actual ride and so, yeah, it's pretty cool. Hello! If you are new to the area, the Monstropolis Chamber of Commerce would like to welcome you. While you're in town, be sure to... We interrupt this program for a special report. I love being part of a ride. It's like, you know, being part of the Haunted Mansion or being uh, a friend of mine, Mark Dennis, who worked at KFI. He's passed away now, but he um, he did... Uh, he was on the uh, the monorail for years, and he was so happy about that. Uh, Thurl Ravenscroft did... You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. Well, he also did uh, some voices on at the Haunted Mansion and, and that kind of thing. Yeah, he was all over. Mansion, Pirates, the Tiki Room, Country Bear Jamboree, and now you're in there. Yeah, it's, you know, you're, you're kind of part of uh, history there, I think, if you made it onto a ride. At least I kind of think so. Oh yeah, you are for sure. And you're not even just a California adventure, but you're heard in the Monsters, Inc. Laugh Floor in Walt Disney World. That was completely separate from the California version, right? Yeah, we did a separate kind of uh, deal for that, uh, like a separate recording, you know, for the, for the one at Disney World. And the one at Disney Tokyo, I'm in there somewhere, I, but I haven't been there and I know it's more interactive. Oh, it is. I've been to Tokyo Disneyland and their Monsters, Inc. ride is really fun. You hold flashlights and you shine them around and the light makes monsters pop up and things. I know you're heard in the queue there before you board and then at the end of the ride telling guests to put their flashlights back in their vehicle. I saw those kids get their items. Please make sure your flashlights are back in their holders and carefully step out of your vehicle. Your voice really is heard around the world. Yeah, anytime uh, around the, the clock, you know, <laughs> 24 hours a day, you're, you know, my voice is out there somewhere at Disney, which is fun. Little, little something out there. You know.